if f of x equals 3 over x minus 7 and g of x equals 1 over x, find f of g of x and g of f of x and their domains. First, let's look at the domains of f of x and g of x. Both of these are rational expressions with variables in the denominators, so we need to make sure that the denominators aren't equal to zero. For f of x, the denominator is x minus 7, so x minus 7 cannot equal 0. And if we add 7 to both sides, we get that x cannot be equal to 7. So the domain here is the set of numbers x such that x is not equal to 7. For g of x, again, we need to make sure the denominator doesn't equal 0. But in this case, the denominator is just x. So in this case, we have x is not equal to 0. Let's now look at the compositions of each, and then we can talk about the domains individually. Let's look at f of g of x. We start on the inside. g of x is 1 over x, so this is going to be f of 1 over x. Now, f of x is 3 over x minus 7, but we're evaluating f at 1 over x, so we need to substitute 1 over x in for the x here. This gives us 3 over 1 over x minus 7. Now, we've seen situations like these before where we have a fraction inside of a larger fraction. This is a complex fraction. And the way to simplify it is to multiply the top and bottom of the main fraction by the LCD. In this case, the only smaller fraction is 1 over x, and its denominator is x, so the LCD is automatically just x. When we multiply in the top, 3 times x gives us 3x, and then in the bottom, we're going to have to distribute that x to both of the terms. 1 over x times x is just 1, because the x's cancel. Then we have minus 7 times x, gives us 7x. And so in this case, our composition of functions is 3x over 1 minus 7x. Now let's take a look at the domain. For this composition of functions, we start off with x, and then g takes x as an input and gives 1 over x as an output. Then f takes 1 over x as an input and it gives us 3x over 1 minus 7x as an output. What we need to do is we need to look at the domains of each of these, g and f, and make sure that we don't have an x value that causes these functions to be undefined. Let's look at g first. For g of x, we know that x can't be 0. So in this case, when we try to plug in x, we have that exact restriction. x is not allowed to be 0. That's because if we plug in 0 for x and we evaluate g of 0, we get 1 over 0, which is undefined. Next, let's look at f. If we look at the domain of f, the only input value that we can't have is 7. Because our input here is going to be 1 over x, we know that 1 over x is not allowed to be equal to 7. To solve this, this is an equation with fractions in it, we multiply both sides by the LCD of the fractions. The only denominator we have for any of these fractions is x, because there's only 1, so we need to multiply both sides by x. On the left-hand side, the x's cancel, and we're left with 1, so 1 is not equal to 7x, and then to get x alone, we divide by 7, and we can see that 1 7th is not allowed to be our x value. So there's two restrictions that we get in this composition of functions. x can't be 0, because that would cause g to be undefined. And then also, x can't be 1 7th, because if x is 1 7th, then 1 over x is 7, and then f ends up being undefined. So our domain here is going to be everything except 0 and 1 7th. 
There are a couple of ways that we can write this. First of all, I'm going to put the composition of functions again. f of g of x, we said is 3x over 1 minus 7x. And then the domain, if we want to write it in set builder notation, it's the set of x such that x is not equal to 0 and x is not equal to 1 7th. The other way that we can write this, because x can be any number except 0 and 1 7th, if we were to look at a number line, we would be shading in everything except 0 and 1 7th. I'm just doing a quick sketch here. And so in interval notation, we actually have three intervals. The first interval is from negative infinity to 0, and then union with the next interval from 0 to 1 7th, and then union with the third interval from 1 7th to infinity. Both of these are ways to express the domain. If you're not given a preferred method, if the problem just says find their domains, then this is good enough. However, if you're in a situation where you're asked for either set builder notation or interval notation, then of course you're required to give the notation that you were asked for. Let's take a look at the other composition of functions now. Let's look at g of f of x. On the inside, we need to have f of x. So this is going to be g of 3 over x minus 7. And then we have to evaluate g at 3 over x minus 7. So we look to g of x, and wherever we have an x, we need to replace it with 3 over x minus 7. So this is going to be 1 over 3 over x minus 7. Now again, we have a complex fraction here. We've got a fraction with a fraction inside of it. We could multiply the top and bottom by the LCD, which is x minus 7, but I want to take this opportunity to look at another way of simplifying this. Whenever we have just a single fraction over another single fraction, and even though 1 isn't a fraction, we can make it a fraction by writing it as 1 over 1. Whenever we've got a single fraction over another single fraction, this is just a way of writing one fraction divided by another. And the way that we divide fractions is we take the first one and we multiply by the reciprocal of the second one. Sorry, this is a multiplication. I shouldn't put the, 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 the x or cross symbol for multiplication when we also have an x in the problem. So anyways, we have 1 over 1 times x over 7 over 3. And when we multiply the top and bottom of those by 1, that just leaves us with x over 7 minus 3. So that is our composition of functions. But again, we have to take a look at the domain to make sure that everything works out well. So in this problem, we start with x, and we input that into f, which then outputs 3 over x minus 7. And then from there, we input that into g, and that gives us x minus 7 over 3 for our output. Let's look at each of these two functions and see what the restrictions are going to be. We know for f as a function, we're not allowed to have 7 as an input. So if x is the input, then that tells us x is not allowed to be 7. So 7 is not going to be in the domain. Next, let's look at g. For g, we know that the restriction is that the input can't equal 0. So in this case, the input, which is 3 over x minus 7, cannot equal 0. Now, we don't actually have to worry about this equaling 0, because if we're doing a division and the answer is 0, the only way to divide two numbers and end up with 0 is if the first number is 0. And in this case, it's not. It's 3. 
So whatever x is here, this is never going to end up being equal to zero. So this doesn't give us any new restrictions. So the only restriction we have is that x is not allowed to be seven. So I'm going to write the composition again. G of f of x is equal to x minus seven over three. And the restriction we have is that x is not allowed to be seven. So in interval notation, our domain is gonna go from negative infinity to seven, and then union seven to infinity. And that is our final answer.